It's been eight years since Tennessee has been a factor in the Southeastern Conference, but times might be changing on Rocky Top. Now in his third season as Vols head coach, Butch Jones has transformed a roster, building depth with recruiting classes ranked among the best in the country. Is UT ready to take the next step in its return to the top of the SEC? Join us now for Tennessee football, looking to 2015, presented by Lilybug Network. And hi there everybody, I'm Mark Nagy and welcome to the show. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, I'll bring in Rocky Top Insiders Reed Carringer as we talk all things Tennessee football for the next 30 minutes. But before we look forward, let's look back to what the Vols did this past spring. The situation for head coach Butch Jones was not ideal. Tennessee's coaches knew that spring practice would be a challenge, with so many key players missing crucial workouts. As a matter of fact, 16 Vols were ruled out for the orange and white game due to injury. Still, some very important Vols showed signs of growth. Quarterback Joshua Dobbs received the Peyton Manning Award for offensive leadership. Cornerback Cam Sutton got the Al Wilson Award for defensive leadership. Big things are expected from those players, and in turn, this team in 2015. Very excited moving forward, both on offense and defense. We took a lot of steps forward this spring, um, installed a, a lot of good things, and, and are playing with a lot more tempo and, and control of the offense and the defense. I mean, you can just see it, and the guys playing, everyone's playing with more confidence, which is great to see. And that's our big thing, just being consistent um, in what we talk about in the secondary, and then that's the defense overall, you know, knowing what to do on each and every snap, and then just going out there, having fun, and making plays. We really had to concentrate on the individual improvement with everyone in our football program. And it was a great illustration or a great opportunity for players to put their identity on video and to prove why they should be playing. There are no off days. And, you know, it's a complete different change. It's, it's a role reversal for them. But that's what you want. That's why you work hard to put yourself in those situations. That's part of the excitement. That's why you come to the University of Tennessee. You get the opportunity to get Tennessee football back to its rightful place. And now the 2015 season is not very far away. We bring in Rocky Top Insiders Reed Carringer to the program. And Reed, certainly you guys at RTI are doing all sorts of different stuff, either be it on the radio, on the web, uh, fill in the folks at home as to what RTI is all about. Well, no matter how you like your vol coverage, we bring it to you, whether it's radio content like you mentioned, Mark, video coverage, written words, all on RockyTopInsider.com, on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. We're bringing you vol coverage as quick as possible and in ways nobody else is in the market. Well, Reed, certainly a lot of things different with this Tennessee football team as opposed to the last couple of years. The biggest change is there's no quarterback controversy. This is Joshua Dobbs' team. And really, you look at this Tennessee roster, they're going to go as far as Joshua Dobbs' arm and legs will take them. It's the first time in his career now, going into his junior season, that he's the upperclassman. He's the guy on the roster. And the first time Butch Jones has had his guy in there, quarterback, leading the offense. I think that means big things for the University of Tennessee. Big things expected for Dobbs this year. And he looked great in spring, really took steps forward, I think, from an accuracy standpoint, uh, making more throws than he could make last year. And, it looked a little quicker too there on the football field. I think that's going to scare the rest of the SEC. Inevitably, every quarterback that plays at Tennessee ends up being compared in one way, shape, or form to Peyton Manning. Over the summer, Manning was back in town hosting his annual golf tournament, which raised over $160,000 for East Tennessee Children's Hospital and his own Payback Foundation. We caught up with Manning and asked him his thoughts on Dobbs. Manning says that the way that Dobbs finished 2014 should do nothing but help him going forward. I don't think it can be it can be underestimated the, the importance of a bowl win, you know, for a young quarterback. 
it just does a lot for your confidence. I think going into spring training, going into this, this summer of off-season training, uh, I really think it can just carry a lot of weight. So, you know, I can't speak for him, but I, I imagine I'm going to see a more, you know, confident guy. Just knowing you had a big bowl win, it means a great deal. I know it meant a great deal for me, you know, almost 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it just helps his platform as a leader, as a young player. You know, the older players will see him as more of a leader now after leading to a good bowl win. So uh, I think that, um, that that win was really important. Bush Jones has said that where he loses sleep at night is who's going to be the backup quarterback. Right. And you've got three true freshmen that are going to be vying for that. Quinn Dormady, uh, Jawan Jennings, and Sharon Jones. Let's start with Dormady. It appears that he's kind of the front runner for that backup spot. What does he bring to the table? Really liked what I saw from Quinn Dormady this spring. Did not expect that. Early enrollee, big to get him in there uh, this spring to get some reps in. And he really took that number two job by the reins and ran with it. Showed a great accuracy down the field. Uh, we haven't seen Tennessee quarterbacks really the last few seasons be able to complete a pass down the sideline, kind of between the sideline and the numbers, stretch the field. Quentin Dormady did that regularly in practice, and I think that's a good sign for Tennessee going forward. Looks like that backup job is his to lose right now. Well, what do we see from Jennings? This is somebody, he says he comes here, he wants to compete for a quarterback spot. A lot of people still think that he may end up as, as a wide receiver or in the secondary. Uh, certainly a lot of upside with him, though. Tons of upside with Jennings. They spent the spring breaking down his mechanics, just starting over basically from scratch with his delivery. And, and he made fantastic strides uh, stepping forward there. Uh, loved what they did with his throwing motion. I thought he improved a lot as a passer. Now still a long way to go for him, but if you're at the spring game, you saw what he can do with his legs. Phenomenal athlete. And, and I think he's going to be a guy that, that's hard to keep off the field moving forward in some capacity. And then finally, as far as Sharon Jones is concerned, a former Florida commitment. He didn't get here until June, so he is a bit of a step behind. Well, I know we're going to talk about recruiting coming up, but, but what a job by Butch Jones to bring in three quality quarterbacks in one class. Sharon Jones coming in this summer. Uh, of all the guys that we just mentioned, all the true freshmen. I, I like his skill set the best for this offense. All right, still to come, we'll look at the rest of this Tennessee offense, including what could be a very potent duo in that volunteer backfield. We're coming back with Tennessee football looking to 2015, presented by Lilybug Network. We want a CEO quarterback. And what does that mean? We want him to own the football team. We want him to take accountability for everything with our football team and with our offense. And for Josh to continue to move forward, you know, he has to, to really work on his quarterback fundamentals of the imperfect quarterback fundamentals. You have no idea how you got sick. Uh, All right. Well, we'll get you fixed up and back on the field in no time. Cool. Bye -bye. The Pool Place is now the Great Backyard Place with everything for backyard living all in one place. It's the region's largest selection of lifetime quality grills with the perfect grill for your family. For all types of outdoor cooking, we're the one-stop premium grill shop. Discover your backyard paradise at the Great Backyard. For all you Vol fans out there, make sure you stop by Hound Dogs. From hats to t-shirts, jerseys, tailgating supplies, home furnishings, auto accessories, and more, Hound Dogs is your one-stop shop for all things Big Orange. Hound Dogs, located at 9250 Kingston Pike in West Knoxville, or shop anytime at hdknoxville.com. One of the great things about the YMCA is that we don't ever have to turn anybody away through our scholarship program that we have here. If it's a financial burden that you're going through, everyone is accepted. The diversity that we have in membership is a great thing to see from seniors to children to teens. We have many different programs here from swim lessons to child watch to soccer to our group exercise classes. The YMCA is more than just a gym facility. It's a community-based place where people build friendships. Better, 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 better. 
I see an individual that's very elusive, uh, very light-footed, very quick and explosive. I've been very impressed, uh, not only with his work ethic and his mentality, but also the way he's come into our football program. He's been very quiet. He's just gone about his business. And right now, he's actually developing into a leadership role within our football team. And welcome back, everyone. Tennessee's running back core isn't exactly deep, but boy, you've got two that may be among the best in the entire Southeastern Conference in Alvin Kamara and Jalen Hurd. Let's start with Kamara. Uh, you know, one time he was a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide, mm -hmm. went Juco, now is with the Volunteers. Big things expected from him and for Mike DeBoer, the new offensive coordinator, he certainly gives them a lot of options in that backfield. Love what Kamara brings to the football field for this Tennessee team. Thank you for being a great compliment to Jalen Hurd. Uh, was one of the few junior college five-star prospects that you see in any recruiting class. And I think pulling him in this 2015 class was huge and expect to see him really probably share the load about 50-50 with Jalen Hurd this fall. And as far as Jalen Hurd is concerned, an in-state kid, and he certainly lived up to all that five-star hype, but there are some health concerns. We see him in a green jersey a lot. How worried are the volunteers about Hurd? Well, I think a little bit. Kamara, somebody we just mentioned, has struggled with injuries too, even at Hutchinson Community College uh, last year on the JUCO level. So you've got two fantastic running backs, but you're worried about their uh, capability to make it through a season. Though Heard last year, 899 yards rushing as a true freshman, third all time in Tennessee history. Uh, showed the, the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield too. Loved what I saw from him this spring. As much as he, I think, met or exceeded those five star expectations last year, he looks like an even better player to me headed into this 2015 campaign. A step quick quicker, running lower. I uh, expect really, really big things from Hurd this season. Okay, so that's the running backs. As far as the wide receivers are concerned, five-star Preston Williams. He is with the Volunteers, and he now joins a group of very talented pass catchers, but certainly the pressure will be on those guys. Tennessee has long been known as wide receiver U. This crop of pass catchers on the 2015 roster hopes to live up to that nickname. Senior Pig Howard has been steadily moving up in the Tennessee record books and enters the season 13th in program history with 111 career catches. He led the Vols in catches and receiving yards in 2014. Howard has also proven to be a threat running the football as well, scoring two touchdowns on the ground last season. Like Howard, senior Jonathan Johnson is undersized, but he has gotten his opportunities in this offense. Johnson caught 10 passes in 2014 and got reps with the first team offense this spring. Marquez North was on his way to a solid sophomore season, starting the first 10 games of the campaign and catching 30 passes, including four touchdown receptions. But then a torn labrum ended his season in November. North's size will make him attractive targets in the red zone. At six foot five and 235 pounds, Jason Kroom has the look of a guy that could play at the next level. The redshirt junior has shown flashes of brilliance during his first two years in Knoxville. A dislocated kneecap cost Kroom the bowl game and all of spring practice. Sophomore Josh Malone came to Knoxville with all the hype that surrounds any five-star prospect, especially an in-state athlete. Injuries didn't cause him to miss any games, but they did limit what made him such an attractive prospect coming out of Gallatin. Malone had a good spring and should build on his 23 catches from a year ago. And perhaps the most important returning pass catcher is local product Josh Smith. An ankle injury forced him to miss all but three games a year ago. The good news for the Vols is that they were able to get him a medical redshirt, meaning Smith has three years of eligibility remaining. He has speed, and he has shown the ability to make big plays in this offense. One guy we didn't talk about there isn't a wide receiver, but he is a pass catcher and a pretty good one in tight end Ethan Wolf. Hard to believe he's only a sophomore now. Seems like he's been on campus forever. He might be my breakout star to watch for, for this season. A really burst onto the scene last year. 
uh, had more production. The whole tight end position for Tennessee the year prior in 2013, Butch Jones's year, Wolf outperformed that by himself. Uh, such a smart young player. Rarely misses a blitz pickup, uh, runs precise routes. I think there's a, a level of comfort with him and Joshua Dobbs, and I expect big things from Wolf in that tight end position this fall. All right, well, you alluded to the offensive line, and if there's a group that really has pressure on them, <laughs> it is that Tennessee offensive line. Last year, very young, took their lumps. Lots of potential with these guys. Can they put it all together? Biggest question mark uh, this year, other than some of those guys we just talked about staying healthy, is that offensive line. And there's a lot of returning experience back. There's a lot of talent. You look across that line, a lot of four-star guys, according to recruiting services there for Tennessee. So I like their potential to take a step forward uh, this year and, and, frankly, couldn't get a ton worse uh, than they could last season. But liked what I saw from them in the spring. And, and really, that goes back to when Joshua Dobbs took over. So like what I saw from them the last five or six game of last season, I think they built on that some in the spring, but they need to continue to do that uh, headed into the early parts of this season uh, for Tennessee to have the year many predict. All right, let's talk a little recruiting. For years, the perception was that Tennessee didn't look in their own oh. backyard for recruits. But a short drive west to Morgan County helped the Vols pick up a kid they hope will help their offensive line for years to come. Colfield Zach Stewart was actually the very first player to commit to Tennessee's class of 2015. It happened back in April of 2013, before Butch Jones had ever even coached a game for the Vols. I've known for a long, long time. I've known I've always wanted to play college ball. I know I wanted to play at the University of Tennessee. It was a huge honor to receive the scholarship as a sophomore. And uh, I committed quickly because, I mean, I knew that was home and that's where I wanted to be. And as far as recruitment goes, I knew what I've wanted since the beginning and I didn't want to pursue anything further. That's been his dream since he was in elementary school was to play, you know, at Tennessee. And with all the attention, all the other colleges that have been in touch with him, you know, constantly, he's never wavered, didn't make another visit. His heart is at University of Tennessee. Stewart won the Mr. Football Award twice while in high school. He started for the Yellow Jackets ever since he was an eighth grader. The fact that he can play guard or tackle gives UT's coaching staff a lot of options. People see a single A school as a disadvantage and uh, I see it as some type of an advantage because you play both ways in a single A school. And uh, I thought that has helped my footwork and versatility playing defensive end here at Cofield and then uh, training to better myself as far as offensive line goes. Zach is physically ahead of any young man I've ever coached. And, you know, I know the speed of the game will be different. I know learning the terminology and different things they do will be a factor, you know, physicality. But the things, he is very intelligent, 4.0 student, and his physical attributes and his great backing, his home life, you know, Zach is going to be successful. Butch Jones and his staff have really done a great job of evaluating prospects and evaluating them early. It's not rare to see Tennessee extend a young man his first offer and not just his first offer for a power school, but his first offer. And that really goes to show you uh, the work that he, that Bob Weldon and his staff do to evaluate players, evaluate them early. And that's why uh, a lot of these players really like him because they, they get on them early, they forge those relationships for a long period of time and it certainly worked. Okay, we've talked about offense, we've talked about recruiting, let's talk a little bit of defense. That's when Tennessee football looking to 2015 continues. It's invigorating, it's exciting. More so than that, it's having the right people in your program. To me, that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter uh, whether they're freshmen or seniors, it's having the right makeup, the right makeup of team chemistry. There's a lot of talented football teams that don't win because of that powerful word called chemistry. Experience and the commitment to a job done well. That's Hancock Tree Service. For all your residential and commercial needs, be it tree removal, tree trimming, stump grinding, storm cleanup, and much more, Hancock Tree Service is a family-owned company that's 100% licensed and insured. For a free estimate, give them a call at 924-TREE or just visit their website at HancockTreeService.com. Hancock Tree Service. For all you Vol fans out there, make sure you stop by Hound Dogs. From hats to t-shirts, jerseys, tailgating supplies, home furnishings, auto accessories, and more, Hound Dogs is your one-stop shop for all things Big Orange. Hound Dogs, located at 9250 Kingston Pike in West Knoxville, or shop anytime at hdknoxville.com.
The Pool Place is now the great backyard place with everything for backyard living all in one place. Relaxation comes home with your very own therapeutic spa. Our world-class spas range from economy to ultra-luxury. Every model is a guaranteed best buy. Discover your backyard paradise at the great backyard. Tennessee Trash Service is a locally owned and operated company serving East Tennessee's residential, commercial, and industrial waste needs, offering prompt, reliable service to their customers. For a free estimate, give them a call at 966-0086. Tennessee Trash Service. Life should be fun, so what's in your game room? Games of Things wants to put more fun in your life this fall with beautiful home theater seating. No matter your budget or room size, Games of Things has you covered with a wide variety of styles and configurations. From simple comfort to the latest seating innovations. Watch the big game, a movie, or your favorite TV show in the lap of luxury. See the selection online at OurGameRoom.com or visit Games and Things, Kingston Pike at Level Road. Because life should be fun, fun, fun. Otis Termite and Pest Control has been serving East Tennessee for 40 years. They get the job done right the first time, guaranteed. Whether you need service for your home, your business, or for new construction, Otis Termite and Pest Control should be your first call. Otis Termite and Pest Control, a locally owned and operated business. Give them a call at 690-1662 or check out their website at otispestcontrol.net. That's Otis Termite and Pest Control. I think it's a compliment uh, when your program has those expectations placed upon them because they see what's going on here at Tennessee. They understand how far we've come from year one to year two to year three. And really people that the people inside the program know how far we've come. And welcome back. This past year, the Vols were not represented in the NFL draft for the first time in 51 seasons. But there are a couple of players in this UT secondary that could make sure that doesn't happen for a while. One of them, if he goes pro early, is number 23. The Tennessee secondary has the potential to be a real strength for this team, returning 75% of his starters from 2014. Senior Ladero McNeil was fourth on the Vols in tackles a year ago and is part of a returning duo of starting safeties. He had 25 stops in the final three weeks of last season alone. Fellow senior Brian Randolph might be the most important member of this defense, with a combined 165 tackles over the past two seasons. He was third best in tackles among all SEC defensive backs last year. And also at safety, Todd Kelly Jr. has lived up to the hype, making the SEC's all-freshman team in 2014. He had 33 tackles and three interceptions last season and will push McNeil and Randolph for a starting spot at safety. Like Kelly, Evan Berry is a legacy. He played in every game for the Vols as a true freshman and showed even more improvement over the spring. He's expected to get some playing time at safety. Look for him to continue returning kickoffs as well. At cornerback, the Vols have one of the best in the league in Cam Sutton. A two-year starter, Sutton had three interceptions a year ago and didn't get as many simply because opponents limit the amount of time that they throw to his side of the field. So who will start opposite Sutton at corner? It could be Emmanuel Mosley. He got a couple of starts in 2014 as a true freshman and broke up six pass attempts. He did miss most of spring practice after suffering from mononucleosis. Or perhaps it will be junior Malik Foreman. Butch Jones got the Kingsport native to flip from Vanderbilt to Tennessee before National Signing Day in 2013. He played in every game for the Vols last season. At Nickelback, going into fall camp, it looks like Rashawn Galden will be the guy. Galden was having a very successful spring practice before hand surgery took him off the field with two weeks to go. He was working primarily with the first team defense. Okay, so that's the guys in the secondary. What about those Tennessee linebackers? There's some question marks with this group, but it looks like the leader is Jalen Reese Maben. Had 109 tackles last season. Successful sophomore campaign for Jalen Reese Maben. Another in-state guy that Butch Jones uh, recruited here, and he burst onto the scene as a freshman a couple seasons ago on the special teams game, but really took the next step last year as an everyday position player. And I expect him to perform really at an all-SEC level. Who can we look at 
otherwise in that linebacking core. Dylan Bates is somebody Tennessee fans want to see a lot of. They just haven't seen very much from him so far. Right, his freshman year derailed due to a shoulder injury there in that Georgia game, but saw a lot of playing time really for a freshman at that position uh, before that injury. Banged up, a little bit limited in spring practice. How healthy he is is probably going to determine how much he sees the field this fall, but there's no doubt the coaching staff likes him. Cortez McDowell, somebody that reminds the coaching staff, those are their words, not mine, uh, of Jalen Reeves Maven, somebody we just talked about. And as for that Tennessee defensive line, for the first time in a long time, folks are really excited about those guys. Let's start with the super sophomore, Derek Barnett. Boy, he lived up to all expectations. Steve Stribling did a great job, Tennessee defensive line coach, getting him ready to play early, but Derek Barnett did a great job getting himself ready to play early. Coming in as a true freshman, just wreaking havoc, honestly. That's the only way to term it. Uh, tons of tackles, tons of tackles for loss. Impact plays is, is what Tennessee coaching staff uh, likes to term those, and he made a ton of impact plays last season. All SEC performer this year, all American, you know, potential top 10 draft pick eventually. You can't say enough great things about Derek Barnett. Kurt Majit, a fifth year guy, Shy Tuttle, a first year guy. Both of them can really do some big things for the balls. Love Kurt Majit off the edge. You saw him last season, started out slow, kind of working his way back into football shape. But once he hit his stride, he really hit it. John Jancic, Tennessee defensive coordinator, likes to be creative with his personnel groupings. Kurt Majit's a guy whose skill sets really uh, fit that mold can play multiple positions and really no matter where he plays he's going to make an impact for Tennessee. Shy Tuttle true freshman coming in and rolling early. Uh, I expected big things from Shy Tuttle. He exceeded those expectations in spring practice. I think he exceeded the expectations of the coaching staff. May, it didn't look necessarily like he was in quite football shape when he got here. About 320, 330 pounds of defensive tackle uh, but when you got him on that field he just kind of wreaked havoc. Joining him this summer is Khalil McKenzie another five-star defensive tackle. Lots of talent again on that defensive front. All right, we're heading to the fourth quarter for our special. We'll get Reed's predictions for what Tennessee football will do in 2015. You're watching Tennessee football looking to 2015 presented by Lilybug Network. We have basically one goal and that's to be a better football team every time we step into the Anderson Training Center. Everything else will take care of itself, but we have to, you know, we have to work on being a much better football team. And if every individual in our football program improves individually, then we improve collectively as a football team. So, the record was four skateboards, and you were attempting four skateboards and a kindergartner. Well, did you make it? Almost. Oh, man. Let's take a look. Did you try wearing a cape? Place is now the Great Backyard Place with everything for backyard living all in one place. It's the region's largest selection of lifetime quality grills with the perfect grill for your family. For all types of outdoor cooking, we're the one-stop premium grill shop. Discover your backyard paradise at the Great Backyard. Life should be fun, so what's in your game room? Games and Things East Tennessee's indoor fun headquarters wants to put more fun in your life with a beautiful new pool table. Games and Things features a huge selection including Brunswick and Olhausen, two of the most respected brands in the industry. Traditional and contemporary styles and all the accessories including chairs racks balls table tennis tops and lighting see the selection online at ourgameroom.com or visit games and things kingston pike at level road leaders club is a youth program we have here at the ymca that focuses on healthy living exercising and leadership values Exercising helps free the spirit, mind, and body, and strengthens those three values. Besides exercising and having fun, teens take home with them leadership values that help them through their everyday lives, at home, and through school. When I see improvements in kids, I feel tremendous. They come back and say, I'm doing really well in school, I made a ton of friends. It's an awesome experience. 
And welcome back everyone. Certainly some high expectations for Tennessee football going into the 2015 season. Some people even picking them to win the SEC East. Reed, last year you thought the Vols would go 6-6 six and six in the regular season. That's what they did. So get out your crystal ball again. Let us know what you think the Vols will do in 2015. Uh, it's rare to see a, a team in the SEC jump from 6-6 six and six to 9-3 and three or 10-2, and two, which is probably the record it'll take to win the SEC East this year. I don't think Tennessee's quite there yet. They're still young, got a lot of talent, but a few question marks on the roster from a depth standpoint. But I like the Vols to go 8-4, and four, make a significant improvement this season, get into quality bowl once again. Uh, time to get Neyland Stadium back, I think, to that imposing environment it used to be. That's a priority for Butch Jones. That's a priority for this team. And if the Vols can do that, it's going to be a really, really big year on Rocky Top. Well, it certainly could be another interesting season of Tennessee football. Thanks to everyone for watching, and certainly thanks to the folks here at Fulton High School for hosting us today. For Reed Carringer from Rocky Top Insider, I'm Mark Nagy. Have a terrific day, everybody. The Pool Place is now the great backyard place with everything for backyard living all in one place. Relaxation comes home with your very own therapeutic spa. Our world-class spas range from economy to ultra luxury. Every model is a guaranteed best buy. Discover your backyard paradise at the great backyard. Leaders Club is a youth program we have here at the YMCA that focuses on healthy living, exercising, and leadership values. Exercising helps free the spirit, mind, and body, and strengthens those three values. Besides exercising and having fun, teens take home with them leadership values that help them through their everyday lives, at home, and through school. When I see improvements in kids, I feel tremendous. They come back and say, I'm doing really well in school, made a ton of friends. It's an awesome experience. 